Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The mandibular final impression tray is constructed using the same procedures as for the maxillary tray. The preliminary impression taken in alginate is usually overextended on the peripheries, so you'll need to draw a denture base outline for the final impression tray on the diagnostic cast in order to provide maximum coverage of the basal seat area. Using a pencil, draw a line one to two millimeters short of the sulcus depth that was registered in alginate. Give careful attention to the frenula in the buccal and labial areas to provide adequate relief while maintaining the required denture base outline. Because this outline is arbitrary, you will later need to try the impression tray in the patient's mouth, and you may make some adjustments of the peripheries of the tray. Because you'll be adding wax relief on the diagnostic cast, You'll draw an outline for the relief two to three millimeters short of the denture base outline. For a better view, we have used a felt pen to darken the outlines. Warm one thickness of 28 gauge pink wax and adapt it over the denture base supporting area of the diagnostic cast. The model must be dry for easy adaptation. Minor wrinkles in the wax often cannot be avoided and are considered acceptable. Trim the relief wax to the outline established as the area of relief. Once the trimming is finished, prepare a mixture of autopolymerizing acrylic resin following the manufacturer's instructions. Place the monomer in a cup and add the polymer. Stir the mixture to wet the powder particles and then allow it to set. While it is setting, paint the diagnostic cast with liquid foil substitute. Apply it only to the surface of the stone, not to the surface of the wax. The liquid foil substitute will enable easy separation of the impression tray from the diagnostic cast. Next, lubricate the thick side of the roller board and the roller with petroleum jelly. Also lubricate your fingers before handling the acrylic resin. When the acrylic resin becomes doughy enough to handle, remove it from the mixing container and knead it. Place it on the thick side of the roller board. Roll it to a thickness of approximately three millimeters. Be careful not to roll it too thin. Then carefully adapt the acrylic resin over the netter base outline on the diagnostic cast. Do not use too heavy finger pressure or you might create areas that are too thin, especially in the areas of the labial and buccal flanges. Using a laboratory knife or a scalpel, trim the excess acrylic resin carefully while it is still soft.
After the trimming, readapt the flanges to the diagnostic cast and set it aside. When the mandibular tray is completely cool and is cured sufficiently, remove the tray from the diagnostic cast and reduce any excess material or thickness with the arbor band on the dental lathe. You may use vulcanite or fissure burrs to trim and adjust the tray. Be sure to relieve the notch areas on the tray of the frenula. The completed tray has rounded and smooth borders that follow the denture base outline on the diagnostic cast. The pressure relief holes for the mandibular tray are added after the wax occlusal rim is applied. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.